at the RCW Anarchy pay-per-view with the RCW Tag Team titles, where the Outlaws will be defending those titles against the White Dragons, Sabre, and Phoenix. Chris Danger is at ringside. He will be here at ringside watching this matchup take place. Uh, we weren't too sure whether or not Chris Danger was going to be at ringside. I had to make a couple last minute um, changes to the RCW pay-per-view, the RCW Anarchy pay-per-view. I had to make a few last changes to it. Um, one of those changes being that I completely forgot that Miles Anderson and Finn Balor were supposed to have a match. Um, so, due to that uh, mistake by me, we will have to have Mercy Phantoms match at, a, at another time. Um, so she will get her match um, against Violet Knight eventually, just not now. Um, because I just completely forgot that Miles, that Miles Anderson and Finn Balor were supposed to have a match um, after this. So um, it'll be a double stream today with uh, the RCW Anarchy pay-per-view as well as um, Lockdown. So we will have that. We will have two streams today. So the Outlaws look to defend their championships yet again after having some dominant perform performance at Forsaken after uh, after winning those titles. So let's just see if the brothers... If the brothers are able to defend their championships. They have been dominant in the tag team division. Like, no tag team has been able to really, like, give them a run for their money. So, maybe the White Dragons have that ability to give the Outlaws a run for their money and be able to capture uh, the tag team titles. seriously don't know why their music is still the, the metal. I'll have to change that up. But we have Chris Danger walking right behind them as the Outlaws make their way out. The Outlaws make their way out here, and uh, they are set and ready to go for this matchup. And we are underway here as Chris Danger looks on. The referee... Got taken out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was on um, the outlaw's mind there, but thank you for the host, Anna. I appreciate it. And just a shot to the face of Saber. So Saber is a very quick man as we've clearly establish that here on RCW and hopefully he can use his quickness to get an advantage over the Outlaws but the Outlaws are a very decorated tag team been tag teaming together for a long time and Saber and Phoenix it's just a mentor mentor um, Phoenix was a mentor of Sabres and taught him everything that he knows 
and they haven't been tag teaming together for that long. However, they have been training together for a while, and training is a little different than just being in matches together. So maybe, so maybe the Outlaws have a little bit of an advantage, but. Saber making the hot tag to Phoenix, and Brian is absolutely on fire right now, realizing what's at stake here, the tag team titles. And Brian doing a little bit of gloating, gloating there, a little bit of taunting, and, and Phoenix is able to take advantage of that with an European uppercut here. And a pin. Not even a one count as Brian is still very fresh in this match. We haven't seen Jason yet. And now Phoenix doing a little bit of taunting, and that's going to cost him too. Both men doing a little bit of uh, too much gloating, and Brian Outlaw is able to take advantage. And a correction on Phoenix, and Chris Danger is loving it. As he tags in his brother Jason, and now Jason is in this match. Ooh, and a kick right to the back of the neck. And Phoenix, and the quickness of the Outlaws, that is why they are tag team champions. And a Samoan drop. To Phoenix, and now Jason turning his attention to Saber. I don't know why, but he is anyway. Knocks Saber out of onto the outside for momentarily, but Phoenix able to take advantage, taking down Jason. We also have uh, a matchup tonight. Luna Outlaw versus Sky Outlaw, the two sisters battling it out for the RCW women's title. And our main event, a two out of three falls match with AJ Styles and the in the RCW World Champion Edge. Oh, and Phoenix looking for a super kick and he connects. On Jason, but Chris Danger paying some dividends here. And Chris Danger with the distraction. Let's just see how much Chris gets involved in this matchup here. Ooh, but a little miscommunication there, but. Phoenix tags in. Saber. I don't know what Saber's going for here, but what? And a European uppercut from Phoenix and Saber looking to pick up the pieces here. And Brian able to break up the pin. Ooh, and Brian with a little bit of a reversal there. Oh, and Chris Danger throwing in a steel chair. However, they cannot use that, but even if they do, the Outlaws still hang on to the title. The title cannot change hands via disqualification or countout, so, you know, if the Outlaws really did want to take the easy way out here, they could use that chair and be done with it in a DDT on Saber. What's Chris Danger doing? Trying to get the turnbuckle and a VR on Saber. One. Oh, not even a one count. Phoenix was able to get break up the pin, and Brian's got to roll out. Jason has nobody to tag at the moment. But Brian gets up very quickly. A reversal from Saber, though. Taking Jason down. 
And Jason has been in this match for quite some time. He might want to think about tagging in his brother Brian again. And Saber just... I don't know what he's doing. Just standing there. Possibly taking a breather a little bit. But that little hesitation caused him big time as knees to the face. Oh, what a roll up here! And luckily Brian was right there. Maybe that's why. Finally tags back in his brother Brian and And the Outlaws, again, looking to defend their tag team titles, and they're doing it very well. But the match isn't over yet. Anything can happen. One big move, and this whole thing could be over. Saber pushes Brian away, looking for a clothesline, but Brian ducks out of the way of that one. What's up, JCB? How's it going? Good to see you in here. And a Superman punch to Brian Outlaw and Chris Danger. Again, distracting Saber so that he cannot get a pin. Maybe he was going to go for a pin there. Maybe he was going to go and tag in Phoenix. I am pumped for WrestleMania too. I, I I really am pumped. Honestly, like I think I think this WrestleMania card is just absolutely stacked and I'm really excited to see what happens. And a leg drop to Saber and now looking for another correction. But nope, Saber able to get out of that one. Uh-oh. Looking for Nightmare on Brian. But the referee's distracted by Jason. And the White Dragons are tag team champions. Jason literally cost the Outlaws the tag team titles. What? what just happened? It looked like the Outlaws were... were on the right path, but... Jason, wanting to get in this matchup... for whatever reason, distracting the referee... And the White Dragons are your new tag team champions. What? I don't know what to say right now. Usually they're on the same page, but apparently not that time. And the White Dragons are your new tag team champions. Jesus. I don't know what happened there. It looked like Jason tried to get in the matchup and the referee tried to stop it. And then... And then Jason tried to like stop the pin, but Phoenix was right there to make sure that Jason didn't stop the pin and the White Dragons are your new tag team champions. I wonder... What this means for the Outlaws going forward, now that they do not have the tag team titles anymore, um, it should be interesting to see what happens as a result of that. But we have Miles Anderson, the ghost of Miles Anderson, versus the demon Finn Balor in a Hell in a Cell match. Now, these two have been going at it for the past couple of weeks here on RCW this whole entire season. Um, they've been going at it. Miles has been just attacking anybody that he can get his hands on. Um, and uh, as a result of that, we are in this match up here. Hell in a Cell. 
I don't know why it says raw on there. It shouldn't, but. We have Miles Anderson. I believe this is his first. Oh, no. Actually, this is his second pay-per-view match. This is only his second pay-per-view match since joining the RCW roster. And Miles Anderson looks ready to go. He has been in a steel cage in, in Ghostly Breakout on Lockdown, which is my other show, which you will see after um, this stream has concluded. And he was in... He was in Ghostly Breakout, a five-minute steel cage match in which you had to escape the cage in five minutes. However, you don't even have to escape because this is Hell in a Cell. But he has to get past the demon. I've been real hyped up for this matchup here. This is probably one of the biggest singles uh, matches that... Miles has had yet in his short RCW career. We await the demon here. And there he is, the demon Finn Balor. Getting ready to face the ghost, Miles Anderson. Now, I don't understand how this rivalry got so heated, honestly. It seems to me it's like sort of been a one-sided sort of thing. Finn Balor just trying to defend himself. And... And Miles Anderson, you know, just being... just being miles and just doing whatever he can to get to the top of the mountain or do whatever he wants to do and it seems like to me this rivalry has sort of been one-sided like miles i don't think i remember finn attacking miles first it was a very one-sided affair as miles with the quick strikes to finn balor and remember, this is Hell in a Cell. There's not much room on the outside to maneuver. But you can escape the cell if you so desire. And Finn Balor tossing Miles to the outside here. Or to the apron, sorry. And suplex into the ring. And Miles quickly checks that kick there. I don't know what Miles is going for there, but Finn it, able to sniff that out with a reversal. And both of these men are very quick on their feet, so it's going to be a battle of quickness. Who's quicker than, than the other? And Finn using... Going after the arm of Miles. One of the... I guess one of the crowd members is booing Finn Balor there. Not liking what he's seeing. A simple body slam to Finn Balor. And, but Finn Balor able to reverse and looking for a drop kick there. But Miles able to duck out of the way. And from that drop kick, ducks under, hop, leapfrog over. Taking Finn Balor down. Irish look to the corner now. Look, look for something, but Finn says no and reverses it. And an Irish whips him to the corner. And a chop. And a drop kick right to the face of Miles Anderson. Looking for a pin here. Referee in perfect position. And only a one count. Able to check that kick. Again, another simple body slam for Miles Anderson here. 
And this matchup could go either way. And Finn Balor taking Miles down. But again, checks his little hand away and a backbreaker to Finn Balor. These two absolutely hate each other. Finn Balor is getting tired of the sneak attacks. Getting tired of the things that Miles has been saying about him. And this is why we, my colleagues and I chose Hell in a Cell as the proper stipulation for this matchup. What better way to get a good match than in a cell where two men hate each other and looking for the missile drop kick in the corner and connecting on the missile drop kick in the corner and Miles is in the drop zone. Finn Balor looking for coup de gras. Coup de gras on Miles. Two, three, and Finn Balor making good work of Miles Anderson. What happened to Miles there? Seemed like he got a little over overzealous and a little in his head and Finn able to take advantage of that. And well deserved. There's your winner, Finn Balor, but I think Miles is definitely not going to take that loss lying down, though. I think it's going to be... I think that rivalry is just beginning. But we have Seth Rollins and Mustafa Ali here in our next championship matchup for the RCW Carnage title. This is an Iron Man matchup. You have 15 minutes to... Get as many falls as you can. And, and the person with the most falls will win the title. Countouts and disqualifications do apply. So if any of these men, for some reason, decide to use a chair or get the other guy counted out, a fall will count towards them. Sorry, Jojo. I do the things around here. And Seth Rollins is ready to burn it down. And I guarantee that's what he's going to do at WrestleMania versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. But here on RCW, it's a little different. Anything WWE doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you've done for other promotions. Yes, that's great. But it matters what you have done in your time here under contract with RCW. And Seth Rollins looking to regain the RCW Carnage title. He had, had it before with AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. That rivalry, um, I believe that was back in season one in our debut season. And he had that title for a while, and then AJ Styles got it. And it's been a while since we've seen Seth Rollins have any gold around his waist. In the heart of RCW, the heart of 205 Live, the heart of SmackDown Live, whatever you want to call him, Mustafa Ali, he is the RCW Carnage Champion. Beating Shinsuke Nakamura at Forsaken for the title. And he looks ready to defend it. There it is, the RCW Carnage title.
Let's get rid of the introductions here. Quit the introductions. Sorry, I'm blocking the clock. I will tell you guys. <laughs> um, I will tell you guys the uh, the time limit. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get you guys on that. But this Iron Man matchup is just beginning here. And a couple of shots to the midsection of Mustafa Ali to start us off. And a standing moonsault from the King Slayer Seth Rollins. Will he become the Beast Slayer? We'll have to find out at WrestleMania in April. So I'm really excited for that match. It's about time Seth gets a title match. You know, gets a universal title match, I should say. As Mustafa Ali is able to reverse that and taking down Seth Rollins. And a knee right to the face of the King Slayer. And Seth Rollins able to check that kick. What's he going for here? A suplex to Mustafa Ali. And another standing moonsault. Seth Rollins looking to pull out all the stops here. Who looks for some type of middle rope splash there, but Mustafa able to roll out of the way. Taking down the RCW Carnage Champion. And Seth Rollins trying to pump the crowd up. Seth Rollins with a simple neck breaker there. And again, trying to get himself pumped up and keep going through this match in a snap suplex for the champion. But Mustafa Ali able to take Seth down. And now Mustafa's in the driver's seat. We are about 12 minutes and 30 seconds into this match. And a drop kick right to the back of the Kingslayer. Looking for the super kick, but Mustafa able to reverse. Dragging him to the middle of the ring. What's he going to go for here through the middle rope? Neck breaker here. Neck breaker on Seth. Uh-oh. Looking for the 054 here. This is what won on the championship the first time. 054 on Seth Rollins. And Seth kicks out at one. Remember, this is an Iron Man match. So it doesn't end on one fall. But you don't want to get <laughs> too far behind. And Mustafa going for a pin again. And Seth again with the kick out. And Seth kips up right to his feet. What's up, Kim? Good to see you in here. I saw your stream yesterday. I was in there. Ooh, with a reversal. Seth doesn't have any stamina, though. Hurricane Rana to Seth Rollins, and Mustafa Ali is fired up now. Power bomb to the outside here. I'm good, Kim. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing pretty well. And a drop kick to Mustafa Ali. Both men got to be careful about the count out here. Ooh, and a shot to the face. Mustafa Ali and a couple misses. Seth is thinking here. 
Seth might be thinking for the curb stomp. Curb stomp on Mustafa Ali. Can he get the first fall here? No, Mustafa Ali kicked out at two. I thought he had him. There's still nine minutes and 30 seconds to go in this match. As this is an Iron Man match, so you have to use your time wisely. Irish whip to the corner. We still have yet to get our first fall. As you can keep track of the falls here by looking down at the HUD, seeing seeing which competitors have a fall here. Thanks for the alert, Xenix. I appreciate you. And Seth. Still coherent in this match, but Mustafa Ali looking for the 054 again and lands it. Connects with the 054. Can Mustafa score the first fall? And he does. And Mustafa is in the lead. But Seth still has plenty of time. With 8 minutes and 20 seconds. And drop kick right to the chest there. Of Seth Rollins and Mustafa lifting up Seth. Mustafa definitely don't want to waste any time. He wants to continue this momentum because if you can get up two falls over not over none, then that would be great for Mustafa Ali. You don't want to give your opponent any breathing room. Especially in an Iron Man match where they have plenty of time on the clock. To get right back in and then a drop kick to Seth Rollins and Mustafa Ali realizing how it, important it is to defend the RCW Carnage title. He would not want to lose it just after he won it. But Seth kicks out. And again going after the arm of the King Slayer. Looking for something big here. And a senton, but looks like Mustafa might have injured himself. He might have not got all of it, but... But Mustafa Ali still able to get the pin here, and Seth Rollins kicks out, kicks out again. And now just a working hold here on Seth Rollins. Again, working away at the King Slayer, but Seth Rollins able to break out of that. Looking for a curb stop one more time. Curb stop again! Curb stop again! But Seth Rollins! He's at one knee! Gotta drag him over to the middle of the ring! Can, can he tie this up at one? And yes, he does! It's tied up at one. Six minutes left to go. Still plenty of time. As we stop, Ali gets up. What a reversal from Seth Rollins. Super kick from Mustafa Ali. And Seth kicks out at two. Man, these men, these men pulling out all the stops here. And a drop kick right to the back and lift, lifting Seth Rollins up. Mustafa Ali being very methodical here as a reversal from Mustafa, Irish whip. And a reversal from Seth Rollins now. Reversal from Mustafa Ali. Irish whip to the other corner. Reversal from Seth Rollins. What a back and forth match. 
We are getting here. And the champion is bleeding all over. Seth Rollins looking for a super kick of his own and connects. But he knows that cannot be enough. He's got to wait for his stamina though. Looking for curb stop. No. Mustafa able to reverse that. I don't know what Mustafa Ali was going for there, but Seth Rollins able to sniff that one out and takes Mustafa Ali down, but he's able to get right back up. And a reversal from Mustafa. German suplex into a bridge. And Seth kicks out at two, but he's got to roll out now. He wants to roll out. Gain a little bit of bearing back. I think that was just baiting the champion back in with a snap suplex. Mustafa Ali looking to get back to a vertical base. I thought he was going to use the ropes there, but he decides to drag himself. Mustafa Ali with the elbows. But again, unable to can follow up anything with it, and Seth is fired up. Looked for a punch to the face and a kick to the midsection, but a reversal by Seth. Stomping away. That's Mustafa Ali dragging him to the middle of the ring. Standing moonsault. Looking for a super kick again. Connecting again with the super kick. Can Seth take the lead? With just under two minutes to go. No. Mustafa Ali kicked out at two. But I think Seth Rollins knows what he needs to do here. Looking for the curb stomp. Curb stomp to Mustafa Ali. Can Seth gain the lead off of that? Yes, he does. Seth Rollins is in the lead. Mustafa got to keep an eye on that clock here. Because he only has under two minutes to go here in this match. But one fall away. And he could tie it as Mustafa Ali able to reverse. Snapmare. And now a working hold on Seth. I think he's wasting precious time just going for these working holds here. He has to come up with something bigger. And Seth is fired up. If Seth can just keep Mustafa Ali down, he doesn't even need another fall. As we have a minute and 30 seconds left in this match. Mustafa... Trying to get the lead back, but Seth reverses it into a super kick. Looking for the elbow. What's Mustafa going for here? Turning him around. Trying to get a drop kick to the back. Mustafa trying to get back to a vertical base. And Seth perfectly fine with just letting this clock go as we only have 40 seconds left. The longer Mustafa takes to get back in this ring, the longer it's going to be. I think Seth has got this match. Underway it takes Mustafa down. I don't know, it's just Seth it's just Seth's taunt. That's it. 
and Rus and Seth Rollins wins the RCW Carnage title from Mustafa Ali. Able to take advantage. I thought Mustafa was gonna tie this tie this Iron Man match up again. But good decision by Seth Rollins. Hitting Mustafa Ali to the outside. And wasting precious time. And Seth Rollins is RCW Carnage Champion once again. As we move on to our next matchup here. And I think you're going to like this one. As we have Rob Van Dam versus Triple H in an Extreme Rules match. And these two have been going at it for the past couple of weeks on RCW this whole entire season. Seems like ever since Rob Van Dam debuted here in RCW, Triple H has had some sort of vendetta against him, some sort of thing against him. I don't know what it is. But these two men are going to settle it once and for all in an Extreme Rules match. Let's see how they fare here as Rob Van Dam looking to come out. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. And the crowd chants Rob Van Dam as he does that famous finger pointing that he did. That he's always been known for. But he's got to face this man. The game, Triple H. Now we, we've seen Triple H here in pay-per-view action against Brian Outlaw for the RCW Carnage title. And that match was a lights out match in which it was a hell in a cell match in which you had to knock out your opponent out cold. You had to knock him out cold. And Brian Outlaw became victorious in that match. I still don't know if he's got Brian Outlaw on his mind as the Outlaws did lose their, their uh, tag team titles earlier tonight. But Triple H must have his mind clear as Rob Van Dam is his opponent tonight. Is Triple H just looking onto the crowd. And doing the spitting the water that he always has done. And the game looks ready to play. And we are underway here in this Extreme Rules match in Triple H. Starting off on Rob Van Dam and Rob Van Dam quickly rolls out. An atomic drop there. Honestly, if I got if I got covered in Triple H's water, I wouldn't really care too much. Because it's Triple H. And 
an elbow drop to the chest of Triple H. And remember, this is no disqualification, no count out, so these men can be out here for as long as they want to be. Because I, I would think it's because it's not, it's, I would think the atomic drop is not considered a low blow um, because it's, it's not direct, you're not like actually directly delivering a low, or like delivering it. Like my fist, when I, I would imagine, you know, when you're actually trying to punch somebody in the balls. You know, a low, that's what a low blow is, but when it's an atomic drop, it's sort of different as, as Rob Van Dam using the kendo stick to his advantage. Yeah, it's a power move, yeah. It's most likely like, it's sort of like a, um, if I had to describe it, it's almost like a strength move and a sledgehammer! Something that Triple H knows very well, trying to use a sledgehammer against Triple H. Again, grabbing the kendo stick and gets back in the ring and destroying Triple H with the kendo stick. It is completely legal here in this Extreme Rules matchup. Thought he was going to go for Rolling Thunder there and a clothesline on the out onto the outside of the ring and Triple H looks to get back in this matchup. But Rob Van Dam has had quite an answer. What's up, Akeem the Dream? What's up, man? How you doing? Kick to the face of Triple H here. Trying to get some homework done. Figured I'd say hi. Well, I appreciate you coming in and saying hi. It's always good to, to see you. Rob Van Dam. Uh-oh. He's going for something big here. If he can set Triple H right, that is. Uh-oh. Rob Van Dam looking for something big here. Looking for possibly a frog splash through the table on Triple H. Frog splash through the table. And he's not done though, but how is Triple H moving at this point? I don't understand. Looking to absolutely destroy Triple H. After the amount of attacks Triple H has carried out on Rob Van Dam. RVD is getting sick of it. Triple H. I don't even know how the man's moving at this point. Couple of shots to the face of RVD. A shot to the arm. Of the whole damn show. Triple H looking for a pin. Only gets a one count. Uh oh. Looking for a submission here on the arm. But Rob Van Dam quickly rolls out of that. A kick right to the face, busting Triple H open. What's RVD doing?
I don't know. Honestly, they don't have every move in the game. This is just a downloaded creation of Rob Van Dam. A pretty good one, though. Um, if I do say so. Spine Buster! On RVD! Right out of nowhere! I did Oh no, Triple H going for the Kendo Stick now! Now using the Kendo Stick on RVD now! Missed that second shot. Oh, Triple H? Oh, um, I, I don't know. I've never seen him use the... That arm move. You know, they have very extensive move sets. A lot of these wrestlers, um, you know, have very extensive move sets. I mean, Paige only used the Page Turner one time. And that was it. She never used it after that. So, and that was her signature move. And, you know, she still didn't use it after winning the championship against AJ Lee on her debut, you know, on her main roster debut. You know, she still... So that just goes to show you wrestlers. Yeah, the Rampage was better, honestly. My favorite move that she did wasn't wasn't even her signature. It was the mounted headbutts where she got on top of somebody and started hitting hit, hitting you in the head with her head. That was one of my favorite moves. Mostly because it was kind of creepy, but kind of hot at the same time. RVD looking to end this now. Looking for another... Frog Splash. What's up, Louie? Looking for another Frog Splash through the table and lands it. Now lifting up the lifeless body of Triple H. I hate it how they can't get back in the ring if there's like a little bit of a... Going up to the top rope again. Top rope moonsault from RVD. Now going for the pin. And RVD wins over Triple H. Thank you for the follow, Louis. I appreciate it. And RVD finally getting his vengeance. Thank you. Everyone says my name wrong. They say Lewis. Well, Lewis is spelled with a W. Maybe it's just because they don't see the the I the I E there. But but how could they get? I can understand why. But considering the way your name is spelled, if there's no W in it, then I don't know where you would get Lou from. Like, Lou is part of Louis. Other than, you know, Louis with L-O-U. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. As we have... Stone Cold Steve Austin. Versus The Undertaker. In a no holds barred match. Now these two. Have had quite. <laughs> the rivalry going as of late. But the time for talking is over. For Stone Cold. Stone Cold is... He can talk for sure. He might be really good at promos, but...
And Austin 316 is here. It's been a while since we've seen him. Pay-per-view wise. I think his last pay-per-view match. Was all the way back in season one at RCW Barrage. Which you can watch season one. On my YouTube channel, every episode of RCW is in there in its corresponding playlist. This is part of Season 4. This is the first half of Season 4. And the Dead Man. RCW stands for Ravage Championship Wrestling. Yeah, one of my favorite moments is when he... Yeah, I like that. When he beat up Vince in the... In the hospital, yeah. I remember that. And the dead man... Looking to make Stone Cold rest in peace here. Why don't we get this match up underway, huh? And Stone Cold taking the dead man down and... And you can hear the RCW Universe chanting Undertaker. But Stone Cold looks to make quick work of the Undertaker here. I don't stream it on YouTube anymore because of the, um... Because of the uh, issues that I've been having with YouTube with like streams processing all the way through. Um, so what I do is I stream it on Mixer and Twitch. And then after the stream is over, I export it um, through my uh, video on demands. And ever since I went from doing that, I've had no issues. Is the Undertaker looking to control this matchup here, trying to get back in? But Stone Cold seems to have an answer for absolutely everything. He throws at him in a simple body slam here. And again, like I said, Stone Cold looking to make quick work of the dead man here. Looking for LaFez press, but the Undertaker reversed that. Lifts him up. Uh-oh. Looking for a choke slam. On Stone Cold. And Stone Cold kicks out at two. A reversal though from Stone Cold. Lifting up the dead man. Reversal from the dead man here. A little bit of a hesitation from Stone Cold there. Going to cost him. Tossing the Undertaker to the apron. Wrenching on his neck to get him back in the ring. And somehow, the Undertaker still got up from that. Ooh, but a reversal and a punch of his own. Taking down Stone Cold. And now Stone Cold is on the apron. Ooh, and a reversal from Stone Cold, though, able to get back in. And a neck breaker. To the dead man. Remember, this is no holds barred. It's 
So anything goes. There are no rules. Stone Cold doing some redecorating here with both announce tables. I think he's just trying to get ready for something big. And again, the knee to the gut of The Undertaker. Tossing him into the RCW universe. I don't think Stone Cold's going to go out there, but he is. The Taker knees him back in, and both men are back in now, but Stone Cold wants to take this elsewhere. Stone Cold grabbing a chair. Oop. Missed that one. Ducks out of the way here. Suplex almost hitting that table there. And now taking the chair. Ooh, but The Undertaker able to reverse and a shot right to the face of Stone Cold in a DDT. Stone Cold in an elbow drop. These men absolutely hate each other. They're looking to cause each other as much pain as possible. Yeah, for some reason, sometimes I have that happen a lot where they like randomly, where the characters like randomly, like the targeting is right, but the characters will just like miss like ridiculously. They won't even hit. Well, the Undertaker, Stone Cold with the elbows. Looks for the clothesline from behind, and Undertaker hits him with a clothesline from behind of his own. And the Undertaker looking to go back to the ring. And Stone Cold is going to be there to join him. But a stunner! A stunner from Stone Cold on The Undertaker. And The Undertaker kicks out a two. He just comes into the ring and delivers a stunner to The Undertaker. But The Undertaker is able to reverse. Oh, looking for another choke slam! Choke slam on Stone Cold. And Stone Cold kicks out at two. Looking for Tombstone. Tombstone. Stone Cold reverses though. Tombstone of his own. Using the Undertaker's own move against him. And the Undertaker still kicks out a two. I think Stone Cold knows what he needs to do. I think he knows. I think he knows. Clothesline to the outside. I think I know what Stone Cold is going for here. This is why he spent the time to do some redecorating here on the outside. Uh-oh. What's he going for here? Stunner through the table! Looking for possibly another stunner. 
through to the other table. Hits it again through the other table. Looking to toss the Undertaker back into to the ring. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> that was very weird. That was the weirdest glitch I've ever seen. Okay, 2K, that's fine. We can roll with it. Looking to submit Stone Cold. But Stone Cold with the knees. Looking for a LaFez press on The Undertaker. Connecting with a LaFez press on The Undertaker. Busting The Undertaker wide open. The Undertaker just decided to no-sell. That and looking for another stunner. Another stunner. One, two, three. Stone Cold wins. Stone Cold after his match. What? What's CM Punk doing here? The fist press on CM Punk. Stone Cold fighting back. And a stunner on CM Punk. Wow! CM Punk is here! Wow! Well, yeah, there's a surprise for you guys. CM Punk has been signed to an RCW contract. You may know why he left WWE in the first place. And I told him, I said, well, let's... Well, let's cool it. Cool it a little bit. Vince didn't give you the main event at Wrestlemania? Okay, that sucks, that's terrible, and that's why you left in the first place. Okay, that's bad. But I'll tell you this, if you perform well enough, you will get main events at pay-per-views. Maybe not at this one, obviously not at this one, but, you know, in the future. And he's like, okay, but I can leave at any time. And I was like, all right, fine. That's how we're going to leave it. But our next match, this is probably the most highly anticipated match of the pay-per-view. Besides our main event with AJ Styles and Edge going up against each other in a two out of three falls match for the RCW World Championship. These are two sisters, Luna Outlaw versus Sky Outlaw. And it is for the RCW Women's Championship. Now, these, now this is sort of a friendly challenge between two sisters. And we've seen these two battle it out in Elimination Chamber at RCW Forsaken in which it came down to Luna Outlaw and Sky Outlaw in which Sky ended up hitting Skyfall twice and Luna kicked out of it twice. And that might have caused some doubt in her head, of course, and she hasn't had the best... Like, she's won matches since then, but for some reason, Sky's never been the same since. I've been noticing a couple things that are a little different. And Luna Outlaw looks to capture her first ever women's championship here in RCW. And what better way to do it than to have, have it be the co-main event 
here at RCW Anarchy in Montreal, Canada. Now these two sisters have wrestled each other before. They've they've wrestled together before. So n n these two sisters know each other very well. And that is why this match has been probably the most highly anticipated matchup ever in RCW history. As this show has been going on since August of last year, we will have a special uh, one-year anniversary this, this August. We will definitely have that on August 21st. That will be our one-year anniversary of this show. And there is your champion, Sky Outlaw. Now this is not about rivalries. This isn't about some sibling rivalry. This is simply about proving who is the better sister in the ring. These two don't hate each other. They love each other to death, but when that bell rings, all of that goes out the window, and they are here to just perform. And the longest reigning RCW Women's Champion, Sky Outlaw, looks to continue her reign here. This should be a great matchup here. There it is. The RCW Women's Title. And now we are underway. And Luna starting off with a DDT. Now these two ladies have to remember, they might be sisters, but they gotta throw that out the window. As Luna tried for something there, but unable to connect and Sky with an Irish whip to the corner and a monkey flip. Luna no sells that kick there. And Sky able to sniff that one out. But Luna with a reversal into a pin combination. We're going to end it early here. And Sky kicked out. And a clothesline. Or a lariat, I should say. Turning Sky inside out. Again, these two sisters are here to perform. This isn't about being friends. This isn't about family. This is about performing for this crowd here. You might not like the outlaws and their tactics, but you know, with their attitude, they don't really care. They just do whatever it is they need to do to stay on top and now looking for another looking for another pick combination reversal and Sky almost got Luna there taking her sister down here looking for Blackout connecting with Blackout on Sky and looking for dawning on Sky Outlaw landing it. A little close to the ropes though. And Sky kicked out at two. Luna's got to stay on top of this. And Sky able to roll out. Get out of that one. Oh. And a drop kick. No. Sky able to reverse that one. Now Sky looking for a way back in this matchup. And she's hitting Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. But 
one, only a one count. Guy wasting valuable time here, just taunting. Sky going for here. Forcing the leg into the midsection of her younger sister, Luna. Now these two sisters, they're only a year apart from each other. Yeah, I know. I know that. Looking to carry Luna somewhere. Luna's against the ropes here. What's Sky going for here? Suicide dive into... Or suicide spear looks like. I've never seen her hit that move before. That's something new. I've never seen her hit that. Drop kick. Luna again trying to pull out all the stops. Looking for a blackout again. Blackout. And a dawning again on Sky, and Sky is in huge trouble here. Dragging her to the middle of the ring. Come on, ref! One, two, and Sky kicked out at two. We almost had a new RCW Women's Champion there. A standing moonsault. And another standing moonsault. Luna, that's a long ways away. I don't know if you should try and go for it in a headbutt. Again, both of these ladies pulling out all the stops here. Luna realizing this is more than just winning the title here. This is Luna proving that she's better. And so far, she's doing a pretty good job and... But a shooting star, though, not connecting on that. I don't think she realized just how far her sister was. Sky with a reversal. Taking Luna down and Luna rolling out. These two ladies on the, in on the outside here. DDT on the outside. Remember, the title cannot be won via countout. Side Russian leg sweep. And Luna breaking the count very smart. Allowing herself to get some breathing room. And Sky running back into the ring. And Luna's right there with a Falcon Arrow. No. Sky reversed. Sky reversed. Got part of the drop kick. Got part of it. I don't know how much of it. Looking for Sky's the Limit again. Connects with Sky's the Limit. And Sky won. What? I thought Luna had it there. I thought Luna had it. I really did. Oh, wow.
but Sky retains. We were going to see a lot more from Luna there. Let's see some of the highlights here. So we have a, we have a pin here. We have, we have two quick pins here from Luna, which I thought could have possibly won the match. And then Sky reverse, reversed that, and then Luna kicked out. So that was a really good one right there. And then we had her hitting the dawning being very strangely close to the ropes. And sky's the limit the first time. Luna kicking out at one. Blackout again. Looks like she hit the dawning after that and then dragged Dragging the lifeless body of her sister there to the middle of the ring. And then Sky kicked out of that. And I thought that was the end of that there. And But her foot was on the rope though. But wait a minute. Where's the other replace? Wait a second. Because the last time that we saw a matchup with Sky and Luna in it, there was a little bit, there was an issue there. See, because last time we saw these two, obviously this is probably just going to be their entrances, um, Last time we saw those two, there was a match that took place on lockdown, the other show, where it was Luna versus Katie Lopez versus versus Sky Outlaw in a triple threat match for the MWE women's title. And what happened there was there was was there was a miscommunication between the ref and Luna broke up the pin even though the ref counted it being three. And then we had to restart that match because of the referee's error. So let's quickly look over these replays again. Especially the one where it was sky near the ropes here as she hits as she hits sky's the limit I don't know wait a minute can we slow that down Is there any way we could slow that down a bit? I wish we could. Because that to me looked like Luna's foot was under the rope for just like a second there. And then it came back. What, the referee? I'm pretty sure. Everybody likes to make contact with the outlaws. I mean, look at them. Her hand! Wait a minute here! Her hand! Her hand's underneath! Her hand was underneath for a minute! And then it kind of like glided over! Is it... That is it that just me or And it's right here on the replay. 
part of her hand is like was underneath the rope and then it kind of went over as the referee started the count see look her hand was underneath the rope before the count even before the count even started uh oh uh uh we're not ending that way we're not ending that way that's not happening I don't know what I just did I think I might have exited on accident I think I might have. Wait a minute! Nope! Nope! That's not happening! It's not happening! We're not doing this! We're not doing this! We're not doing this! We are... We are doing this through exhibition, through an actual match, normal match, we have to do this. Because I accidentally clicked the wrong button, so that's my bad. That's my bad. I gotta go to custom. And then we gotta go to... We gotta go to RCW Anarchy. And then... We are going to do this. I know universe mode won't still won't count it until I switch the title over. I will switch the title over. I will switch the title over. Don't worry. All right. Due to a kind of controversial ending, see we had referee mishaps before. So we will have to crown. Champion, and then we'll go back into universe mode and do the. And switch the title over. Let's see if the ref can get it right this time. Let's just skip through the entrances. We've already seen them. Let's get this underway. Alright! I knew controversy would start at some point. Let's get this underway. And a DDT. To start this one off. Same thing. Now, we got to even be extra careful here. As Luna's hand was underneath the rope. But the referee did not count that. So that's what forced us to do a restart here. As a reversal from Luna looking for a... Suplex! I'm just a simple stomp dragging her away from the ropes. A reversal there. Uh oh! What's Sky going for here? She might be looking for the same thing she did last time! But a drop kick through the middle rope here. I thought she was going for like some suicide spear or suicide dive or whatever she hit last time. And don't worry, we will fix the universe mode and we will switch the title over. an Irish whip to the corner here. Oh, yeah, it was a spear through the ropes, yeah. That's what it was. The spear animation and the suicide 
uh, dive uh, animation look so similar to each other. Ooh, and Luna with a chop of her own. Forcing the head down into the canvas, and Sky is in huge trouble here in a standing moonsault. But Luna looked for black out there, but Sky able to reverse it. But Luna able to get on top of it with a falcon arrow. And again, Sky's in huge trouble, and another standing moonsault. Going to the middle rope here. Shooting star! Looking to win the RCW Women's Championship! No! Sky kicked out. I'm gonna slap right to the face of her own sister. Oh no. Oh no. Suicide. Another drop kick! I thought she was gonna go for the spear through the ropes. Able to connect with the blackout. And a dawning on the outside. More punishing than inside the ring. Counter five though. Six. Seven. Seven and Luna getting back onto the top rope. But Sky cuts it in and a super kick through midair. Sky caught it with a super kick through midair. Is that it? No, Luna kicked out. But Sky's on the comeback though, but Luna stops it. Samoan drop. Now Luna looking for the comeback, but looks like a corkscrew uppercut there. Luna was trying to go for the comeback. Couple of punches to the face. Now trying to do a working hold here. But Luna. Once again able to break out of that. Sky though. Able to reverse. Luna able to reverse. Looking for a 619 perhaps? No? Alright. I'm going to hip attack there. And a blackout again. But Luna's tired. Luna wasn't watching her stamina and Sky able to take advantage. Irish flip to the corner. Now drop kick to the back. Drop kick again. But Luna rolls out. And Luna, a little bit of showing off to the crowd there. And Sky able to meet her on the outside in a DDT. They can't... They can't pin each other out here. So good strategy and an insiguri. And Sky able to reverse that. Throwing her back into the ring. And the referee starting to get his counts right this time. That's a long ways away, Luna. I don't think you're going to... I'm trying to connect with the elbow drop, but to no avail there.
Looking for a pin. Baluna able to kick out. Looked for the super kick, but Luna reversed it. Looked for the crucifix. Super kick. Luna's in big trouble here. Uh-oh. Looking for the sky heel hook. I've never seen her hit this before. I've never seen her hit this before. But Luna able to break out of it. Probably because she hasn't used it that much. She hasn't mastered it yet. And a blackout. On Sky and looking for a dawning here. Dawning on Sky. One, two, and Sky kicked out. Sky kicked out. Standing moon salt. What was it? What was it? HBK? I think it was HBK that did it, right? Well, he was the one one of those guys that made it like well known with the sweet chin music. And a hair toss. Looking for a pin there, but not even a one count. And Sky. Looking to go up top for a big move. And a splash there. Well, looks like that hurt Sky more than it hurt Luna, though. Looks for another... I thought she was going to go for a super kick, but looks like it was... Uh... Looks like it was Sky's the limit she was going for. Working on the arm again. Ooh, into a bridge here. And Luna kicked out. Oh, looking for some type of RKO? Maybe? I look like a. Look like the RKO move there. And the ref backing her off. Making sure that Sky can still continue. Uh oh. Sky reversed that. Luna deciding to go on to the outside here. Doing a little bit of redecorating. They can do more damage out here being out here on the floor. And another DDT. Oh. Throwing Luna right into the ring post. And Sky blowing kisses to the crowd. And another DDT. And Sky realizing. Sky realizing that the count out was there and she doesn't like to lose she doesn't like to win by count out she believes in pinning her opponents which is very uncharacteristic of the outlaws they always like to find the easy way out but looking for a blackout again blackout again on sky looking for dawning once more
and connecting with it. Looking to become RCW Women's Champion. And Luna becomes the new RCW Women's Champion and laughing in Sky's face saying, I told you I was better. Glad we got it right. Nothing appeared to be controversial there. She's like, give me that title. I just want it. And Luna is your new RCW Women's Champion. As we move on here, but we got to go back into universe mode. Obviously, switch the title over. Um, because of my stupidity. I'll make sure not to forget to switch the title over. But now that we got that all sorted out, we are ready for our main event. Don't pay attention to that. <laughs> but we are ready for our main event here. And that is AJ Styles versus the Rated R Superstar Edge. For the RCW World Championship in a two out of three falls match. Now AJ Styles earned the right to face Edge in this matchup when he beat Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, and Ricochet in a fatal four-way number one contender qualifying matchup. So he tapped out Braun Strowman to the calf crusher, which was very shocking. Um, but... He did it anyway. And the phenomenal one. Is here. What's up, Wild Tay? Remember, we'll have a double stream today with Lockdown and this right here, RCW Anarchy. I'll probably do them an hour apart because I want to make sure that I get uh, this exported. So... Plus, I got to go eat something too, so... But we have the Phenomenal One looking to gain some championship gold over this man you think you know him but you might not the rated r superstar edge from the live sex show on raw to rcw world champion I wanted to rest him up and make sure he was fresh and ready to go for this match. And it appears that he is. AJ Styles, a former RCW Carnage Champion, looking to get that championship gold and we are underway here. And simple arm drag to start this off. Well, yeah, you know, business is business, you know? But honestly, that's one of the reasons why I would never work for WWE, because they would make me do things that I wouldn't want to do. 
Whereas, like, other wrestling promotions that have, like, more creative freedom and more sort of... I guess you can get away with more things and they take their superstars' opinions into account. Which is why RCW is a little different. This is a reversal contest here. It's Edge looking for a DDT. Looking to end this matchup early. I thought this was two out of three falls, but I guess... I guess the referee, the booking messed it up and it's just a normal match. Should have been two out of three falls. Taking Edge down though. Quick strikes from the phenomenal one, but Edge able to reverse. Now, how about that match that we had just seen from the Outlaw Sisters there? I have to say, what a great co-main event to our show here. That was totally co-main event worthy. If not the main event. And a headbutt from the Rated R Superstar. Yeah, but honestly, do you really think that she would have gotten anything out of that if she actually did it? Think about it. WWE's a big company, and yeah, she is a worker for that company, but... But probably she wouldn't have gotten much out of it. You know, it's like if you're going to sue somebody, you got to realize, like, you know, how much are you willing to sacrifice to get whatever it is that you want out of it. And a DDT to AJ Styles. Looking to end this matchup very quickly here in a spear. Spear on AJ. And AJ kicked out. Looking for a pin again. A little bit of frustration. I think I am starting to sense that anger is creeping in. Edge here. AJ just needs to find a way to fight back in this matchup. And with that reversal, it might help him. Snapmare. Kick right to the back. Of the RCW World Champion. Knee right to the face. Oh, what's Edge going for here? And just a simple flapjack. And now Edge. He's on the comeback here. But AJ Styles able to duck under it. Takes Edge down. And I think what AJ needs to do here, he needs to get the legs of Edge in a weaker state if he wants to hit that calf crusher. If he wants to hit that calf crusher, he's going to have to get the legs of the Rated R Superstar in a more fragile state. Oh! Edge blocked that suplex and delivered a suplex of his own. AJ Styles able to reverse though. Taking down Edge. And again, I don't think he's ready. 
I don't think he's ready to hit that calf crusher, but Edge knew exactly what AJ was going for. Now Edge looking to tear up the legs of AJ Styles. It definitely has to hurt now. The knee to the gut of AJ Styles. And multiple punches to the face of AJ Styles. Looking for a DDT. No clothesline. Uh oh. I thought Edge reversed that, but I guess that's one of a. Uh, Part of AJ's repertoire there, and an arm drag by Edge. Tossing him to the apron. And a suplex back into the ring. Could that be it? No. AJ kicks out. Uh oh. AJ taking Edge down here. Making sure that Edge cannot use the ropes to his advantage. Again, trying to take out the legs of the rated R superstar and Edge. We will stop that from happening. Planting AJ. Looking for a DDT again? No! Edge or AJ reverses. Trying to go for the arm now. Again, trying to further injure the legs. AJ's in big trouble here, though. Just a one count. AJ able to reverse that kick and a German suplex. Dragging Edge to the middle of the ring. Looking for a phenomenal forearm, phenomenal forearm on Edge. What is he doing here? Taking some time. Finally pins Edge, and Edge kicks out at two. That might have just been enough time for Edge to kick out. And now Edge reverses. Looking for the DDT! Landing the DDT! And AJ still kicked out! I don't know what he was going for there, but whatever it is, it didn't work. A little bit of hesitation, though, caused Edge to be able to get out of that. Reversal. And a body slam to the rated R superstar. Dragging Edge to the middle of the ring, looking for Cap Crusher. Looking for Cap Crusher. Cap Crusher on Edge. Cap Crusher on Edge. Edge trying to hang on. Edge trying desperately to hang on. He's trying desperately to hang on. Still trying to hang on, but he can't. And AJ Styles is your new RCW World Champion.
What a match, though, by these two amazing superstars. As Ed, as AJ took a little bit of time. Well, that's what makes it realistic, man. If you're too tired, you obviously are not going to be able to. Hang on. And AJ Styles is champion once again. And that is our show, guys. Thank you guys for attending or watching, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is the end of the first half of our amazing season so there are 20 episodes a season here in RCW obviously this being the 10th because it's the pay-per-view um, so what's on schedule until then um, obviously we have lockdown still on uh, Fridays on today which I will do uh, an episode today um, that will begin the MWE Fractured Championship Tournament in which we will be determining Brian Outlaw's next opponent. And then uh, we obviously had the Division 2 that came out today. Uh, I've been playing that a little bit. Uh, I pre-ordered it, so I played the beta. I'm really enjoying that, so that might be one of the games that we uh, decide to try out on stream. For a while and so what's next in terms of you know rcw what's next so we will have the second half obviously um you know we will have the second half and there will be a little bit of a break in between um just so that for those of you that have missed any of the episodes of this season you guys can catch up by going to my youtube channel at botch tv and you guys can <coughs> catch up by watching the playlist. Every single time an RCW episode ends or a lockdown episode ends, it gets exported to my YouTube channel, and you guys can watch it after the fact. Um, it just gives more exposure to the series, more exposure to the channels, um, both Mixer and Twitch and all that, and allows people to watch it in case they have missed any of it. Even if you miss one match, I highly suggest you go back and watch it because these storylines are so in-depth that one match changes everything. Um, so it's totally different. And with CM Punk deciding to attack Stone Cold, there's going to be some interesting things happening this second half. And with Marielle Rogue and, and J-Rogue and Rosemary watching very closely uh who knows when they're gonna make their appearance um so it should be interesting so in case you miss any of those feel free to go to the youtube channel and watch them after the after the fact also i will type in chat real fast the discord um if this link doesn't work for you in chat then um on my mixer there should be uh, my discord there and you can just click that link and you can join the discord the discord is just another way for you guys to keep in contact with me uh, my co-writer John who helps me write the storylines for this show and for lockdown um, he's in there um, other followers of the stream are in there as well and we have a general chat section where we can just chat about random stuff. We have sports. We have RCW. We have lockdown. You know, we have all, all everything on the channel that you can dream of. Um, we have channels for music, movies, whatever. And that is the place where you guys leave your feedback. Um, usually, once when I take breaks to write storylines for the second half, of the season 
Uh, that is your opportunity to give you got to give me feedback on seasons that you've watched before, if you've been here with us for a while, or if you're brand new and you're just watching this episode and you want to leave your feedback in there, please feel free. Because this is a fan-driven show. Um, you guys deliver your feedback and you tell me, you know, what was your favorite match, you know, things like that. Even if it's little things like that, like what your favorite match was or what you guys what you guys think of a storyline, um, you know, as it plays out in the episodes. You know, little things like that because I cater to you guys. WWE might not care what we want. They might only care, you know, for them as a company. Um, and as a business, you know, business is business. And you can't really do much about that. Um, no matter how much we complain, we can't really do much about that. But here at RCW, um, we do things a little differently. I take your guys' feedback hugely into consideration. And, and if there's somebody that you want to see... Um, Feel free to free, feel free to tell me like if it's a particular superstar that you want to see or something like that or you know anything to jazz up the RCW brand and we are currently making t-shirts Yeah, that's all it is for them if it makes them money. That's the only thing they'll focus on even if we hate it. Yeah, exactly um and I feel like as fans, like no matter how much that pisses us off, we have to we have to realize that WWE is a business. And whatever makes you the most money, do it. Um However I am really excited for this year's WrestleMania with that with that said. Um So like I was saying, uh, we were we are making merch currently. We are trying to think of merch design, making T-shirts for the show, and um, you know we're we're uh, working on some outlaw merch right now. We're working on some outlaw merch for the outlaw family, Brian, Jason, Sky, and Luna. So we're working on some of that stuff. So I can't wait to get that up in store for you guys. The T-shirt should be about fifteen dollars each. Um, I'm using Teespring. Um, for the in terms of the store, um, so I'm working with a bunch of with a bunch of guys and trying to get those made. Um, I don't like to overpay for T-shirts. I'm pretty sure you guys don't like to overpay for things either. And you know how WWE charges like twenty, thirty dollars a shirt. Uh, we like it to be a little bit more cheaper for you guys to show you guys even more support over this for the show. And if you can't buy any merch, that is. That is okay, that is fine. The merch store will be up soon, but even if you can't buy any of it, it is completely fine just having you here in the stream and supporting the stream and watching it, even if you're lurking, um, whatever it is that you do, um, it supports the stream. Um, so I'm extremely grateful for the phenomenal first half of the season, no pun intended, um, that we have had. Um, so, uh, with that said, guys, I will catch you guys next time on RCW. Once again, definitely consider joining the Discord because it, that way you guys can stay in contact with me and there's no more beautiful contact than having connection with the viewers. Um, you know, I think that that, um, helps the stream grow and, you know, to know that, streamers that interact with their viewers and actually care about their viewership even if it's only a couple guys that are watching um it just grows the community and allows us um as streamers and as content creators to get back to you so the discord feel free to join that i i created that specifically for rcw and for you guys um it's free all you got to do is have an email and a password and you know just create some username and Click on the link and you will be added. That link doesn't expire. Just the only rules that we have in the Discord is, you know, just don't start drama. Don't do anything that you wouldn't do, um, you know, in real life. Um, stuff like that. Um, feel free to leave your feedback about this pay-per-view. 
on there um, in the RCW chat section. Um, in case, you, like I said, in case you miss any of the, the the matches or anything like that, all my shows are archived and put onto my YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure, so that you guys can um, can watch it after the fact. It's all in a playlist, all in chronological order, so. You can watch, you can binge watch it like anything you would watch on Netflix. So, um, thank you guys for a phenomenal, nope, again, no pun intended, first half of the season. And I will catch you guys next time on RCW. See you later, guys.